company with advanced manufacturing capabilities in three seminal ways. First, we are embedding innovative technologies in every single business to generate ever greater value for our customers. Second, our talented engineers and scientists are incubating several critical technological innovations in-house to enhance our product and service offerings. Third, we have built an AI-native digital infrastructure for all Reliance businesses and have built our software stack integrating end-to-end -end workflows and real-time dashboards. With the success of our Atmanirbhar efforts, we are accelerating India's transformation into a deep tech nation. Reliance spent over 3,643 crores in the financial year 24 towards R&D, taking our spend on research to over 11,000 crores in the last four years alone. We have more than 1,000 scientists and researchers working on critical research projects across all our businesses. I feel proud to inform you that last year, Reliance filed over 2,555 patents, mainly in the areas of bioenergy innovations, solar and other green energy sources, and high-value chemicals. Digital is another principal area of our in-house research. We have filed patents in 6G, 5G, AI large language models, AI deep learning, big data, devices, Internet of Things, and narrowband IoT. I assure you that this ongoing tech-driven transformation of Reliance will propel your company into a new orbit of hyper-growth and multiply its value for years to come. Our future is far brighter than our past. For example, Reliance took over two decades to be amongst the top 500 companies globally. In the following two decades, saw us joining the league of the world's top 50 most valuable companies. With our strategic adoption of deep tech and advanced manufacturing, I can clearly see Reliance earning a place in the top 30 league in the near future. Dear shareholders, let me begin by reporting to you the financial performance of Reliance for the year 23-24. Reliance Industries posted a record consolidated turnover of 10,122 crores in the financial year 24, becoming India's first company ever to cross the rupees 10 lakh crore mark in annual revenues. Reliance's EBITDA was rupees 178,677 crores, while the net profit was rupees 79,020 crores. Reliance's exports were rupees 2,99,832 crores, accounting for 8.2% of India's total merchandise export. Reliance invested cumulatively over 5.28 lakh crores in the last three years. Reliance remained the single largest contributor to the National Exchequer, contributing 1,86,440 crores through various taxes and duty in the financial year 23-24. In the last three years, Reliance's contribution to the Exchequer crossed rupees 5.5 lakh crores, the highest by any Indian corporate. Reliance also expanded its social impact with a 25% increase in its annual CSR spending to rupees 1,592 crores. With this, Reliance's total CSR spend for the last three years crossed rupees 4,000 crores, the largest among all Indian corporates. Reliance continues to be ranked as India's best employer by several external agencies. I am happy to state that Reliance continues to be amongst the largest employers in India. The nature of employment creation is changing globally 
primarily due to technological interventions and flexible business models. Therefore, rather than just the traditional direct employment model, Reliance is embracing newer incentive-based engagement models. This helps the employees earn better and instills the spirit of enterprise in them. That is why the direct employment numbers show a slight dip in the annual figures, although the total employment created by Reliance has gone up. We added over 1.7 lakh new jobs last year. If we include both the traditional and the newer engagement models of our employment, our head count today is nearly 6.5 lakh. Among all of Reliance's record achievements so far, this one will always hold a special place in my heart because employment creation for India's talented youth has to be our top national priority. Dear friends, last year, Reliance floated the financial services business as a separate listed company, which helped unlock significant value for our investors. Today, Geo Financial Services is worth nearly 2.2 lakh crores in market capitalization. I am sure that GFS will continue to create great value for society, for the nation, and in the process for shareholders as well. Let me now talk about our digital services business. Dear shareholders, in 2016, Geo began its mission to bring digital life to every Indian. And in eight short years, Geo has transformed India into an inclusive, premier digital society. We have democratized digital services, making them accessible to every citizen and business across our nation. Thanks to Geo, India is now the world's largest data market. Today, Geo's network carries nearly 8% of global mobile traffic, surpassing even major global operators, including those in developed markets. And we have done this while maintaining the highest service quality, setting new benchmarks on the global stage. Geo's commitment to affordability has made its service accessible to all with current data prices that are one-fourth of the global average and just 10% of those in developed countries. In eight years, Geo has grown to become the world's largest mobile data company. Today, Geo is a 490 million strong family, reflecting the immense trust and loyalty of our customers. And each Geo customer, on an average, uses over 30 GB of data monthly, driving a 33% growth in our data traffic over the past year. We have also made significant strides in home services with nearly 30 million home customers across our digital broadband services and digital television services. This makes us one of the largest digital home service providers globally. And among business users, over a million small and medium businesses in India have embraced Geo. We are proud to be the 